Today, I'm gonna to show you how to import and organize your photos in Lightroom Classic. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And I wanna welcome you to our intro to Lightroom Classic free tutorial series. Here in our first video in the series, we're gonna start off with a quick tour of Lightroom Classic and then show you how to import and organize your images. You'll learn how to add metadata to your photos, like adding copyright information so everyone knows that these are your images. You'll learn how to use the folder structure in Lightroom and how that correlates to your computer, and you can create collections for similar images. This free series comes with sample images so you can download them and follow along. You can do that by clicking on the link right down below. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Lightroom Classic. So here we are in Lightroom, we got a fresh copy with no images. The first thing we need to do is get our images into Lightroom. So to do that, we're gonna go to File and then down to Import Photos and Video. There we go. Now we have our import dialog here on the left-hand side. This is where you're gonna choose your images that you wanna bring in. And here on the right-hand side, this is where you're actually gonna be putting your images. And then we have a few options for file handling at the top. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to download your sample images. You can do that right here on the tutorial page because it's time to get them into Lightroom. So Lightroom does have a way to browse your files right here on the left-hand side, but to me, I actually like to do this just in my Finder menu. If you're using a Windows computer, you could just use Windows Explorer. So what I'm gonna do is open up my Finder menu and then simply click and drag the entire folder that I want right into Lightroom, get that little plus icon. And there we go. It's gonna automatically find it and give me a preview of my photos. Now, if you're importing directly from a memory card, you're gonna see the option right here on the left for your memory card. All you have to do is click on that and you'll see a preview of your images. So now that we have a preview of our images, let's go through the different ways that we can add these into Lightroom. So right up here in the top, you can see we have four options. We have copy as DNG, and this is gonna be great if you're photographing raw images. So if you're bringing these in right from your memory card and you photograph raw photos, you can actually convert those raw photos to DNGs, which is a little bit lower file size, so it's gonna save space on your computer, and it's a little bit more of a universal format, so that's what I suggest doing. So if you're gonna bring raw photos into your computer through Lightroom, I suggest copying them as DNGs. Now, if you just wanna do a direct copy, you can do that here. And of course you choose your destination right here on the right hand side. You can move them from one location to another and then you get to choose your location right here or you can simply add them into your catalog. Now, if you just add these to your Lightroom catalog, it's not gonna move anything around on your computer. It just allows you the ability to organize and edit within Lightroom. So for this example, we're gonna use the add option and then we're gonna circle back around and show you how copy works as well. But for now, we have a couple of options that are really important when we're importing. So here on the right-hand side, we have a few options for file handling, okay? Here you can choose your previews, how large you'd like to make those. Uh, I recommend just keeping all that standard but down here in the bottom, you have your develop settings and your metadata. Now your metadata, this is actually pretty important because here's where you put your copyright information into your images. So let's go ahead and click, if it just says none right there, we can just go to new and here you can add your metadata preset. All right, I'll just call this Aaron Nace 2. And here's where you wanna go ahead and include, there we go, include your name, include the fact that they're copyrighted. And if you have a website, there we go, you can add that there as well. Now, of course you can fill out all this information if you'd like to, but this is kind of like the main stuff right here at the top, that's why it's read it out. So basically this will just make sure that all this information is put into your files. So if you were to export these and put them on the web and someone were to like, let's say they were trying to take credit for your images, they wouldn't be successful because your information that you put in here is actually embedded into those files. So this is a really important step. So let's go ahead and hit create now. There we go. And our metadata, here we can see just from that preset I made, and you can of course create different presets if you'd like. Our metadata is gonna be applied to these photos. Now, here for our keywords, we can add something like vacation. There we go. And then those are gonna be keyworded with the word vacation, which you can then search for later and we'll show you how to do that. So that's pretty much it from the import dialog. Now, let's go ahead and click on import on the bottom right, and it's gonna bring all these images directly into Lightroom. Now it's time for our quick tour of the program. 
So starting at the very top, you have your file menu, of course. Here's where you access the majority of the functions in Lightroom, but there's also buttons throughout the program. So here on the left-hand side, you have sidebars, and these two can actually expand and collapse out. All of the sidebars, you can do that. There we go, including the one here on the bottom. So if you want a little bit more space, you can also hold down Shift and hit Tab, and all of your sidebars will go away. Shift Tab will bring everything back together again. So on the left-hand side, you have information about your catalog. You have folders. Now, these are the actual folders that correlate to the folders on your computer. We're going to get to these in just a second. Here you can add collections, like if you have a number of similar images, you can put those all in a collection here. And of course, you can import and export. Now, you have a few different views of your images here on the bottom. You have your grid view, a loop view, which will allow you to just see your image a little bit larger. You can uh, compare two images. There we go. And you use your left and right arrows to move those together. So you can decide, you know, which one of these is my favorite. Okay, you have a survey view, which will allow you to use uh, multiple images. Let's go ahead and click on a few of them and then click on survey view so you can see just these. And if you hit shift tab, it's a really nice way to look at those. You can then click on the X boop, to just remove one of those. And maybe you just want to show your client a couple of your favorite images from a photo shoot. This is a great way to do that. So let's go ahead and back to our grid view here. And here on the right hand side, you have all of the information about your images. So you can do like a quick develop, like if you wanted to bring your exposure up or down, clarity and vibrance. Here we have our keywording and don't forget we added the keyword vacation. So it's all showing up here in my images, which is fantastic. And then we have our metadata. And here you can see, in fact, the copyright is now Aaron Nace. Now I'm gonna remove this later because I actually didn't photograph these. These are stock images, but for your images, it is important to add your copyright information. So everything that we've been looking at so far has been in the library module, which is about organizing and viewing your images. Now, if you want to start editing your images, which we're going to get to in a later video in this free series, then you want to click up here on your develop module. There we go. Choose your images. And here's where you can start actually making changes to your photographs. For instance, if I want to bring my exposure up or down, I can do that right here in my develop module. Now, there are other modules like uh, looking at a map, if you geotag your images, you can create books, slideshows for print and the web. But in my experience, I spend majority of my time right here in the library and develop modules. So that's what we're going to be covering in this free series. So that's it for our quick tour. We're going to go a lot more in depth in later videos in this free series. But for now, we're going to go back to our library module and I'm going to show you a different way to import. Because if you're importing images just that are already on your computer, I like to do it this way. But if you're importing images from a memory card, I like to do it a slightly different way that helps me with organization. So let's go ahead and back to our library module and we'll show you that. So let's go back to our library module here up at the top. And then here on the left hand side, we can see our folders. Now, these are the actual folders that correspond to folders on your computer. And right now I just have a sample images folder, which is fine. But let's say I wanted to import images from my memory card, which is a lot of the time when I use Lightroom. I don't want to just like create a folder on my desktop called sample images, right? I need something that's going to help me organize my images just a little bit better. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just right click here on this folder and we're going to go to remove this folder. OK, just hit remove there. And it's just going to remove all the images from my Lightroom catalog. Now, it doesn't delete the images on my computer. That's totally OK. They're just not in Lightroom right now. So we need to go ahead and re-import. So let's go back here to import. OK, now, same deal here. I'm, I'm going to choose my sample images once more. So we have all of our little previews here. Now, instead of the add option, we're going to go to the copy option. And if you've shot raw images and you're bringing them from your memory card, I suggest doing a copy as DNG, but you'll have the same settings. You can see copy and copy and DNG, same settings here on the right. So now we're going to choose the copy option. Okay. Metadata is the same. Keyword is the same. There we go. Looks good. But here at the bottom, we have some options for a destination because I'm not simply just like bringing them right into Lightroom. I'm actually going to copy them from one place to another. And here is where we bring in a lot of options that are going to help us stay organized. So here in our destination, we're going to go ahead and make sure that they're organized by date. So organizing these by date, of course, you can choose original folders, put everything in one folder. But I suggest doing this by date. And that way, it's very easy to stay organized for the long term. 
So here we have a few options for the date format. This is the one that I prefer. And then we're gonna choose our main folder. So I have a pictures folder here. There we go, we can see Flurm pictures. We have a 2019 folder and now I have a 2020 folder and it's gonna go ahead and put everything into today's date, which is fantastic. So it's gonna organize everything by date. That's the format it's gonna use and it's gonna put it here on my computer. So let's go ahead and hit import here. And now it's gonna copy everything from its original folder and then put it into this location. So now our images are back into Lightroom. They're organized by date. So let's take a little bit of a deep dive into organization because that really is one of the pillars of Lightroom Classic. So back here in Lightroom Classic, now we can see instead of this just saying sample images, we have our 2020 folder, and then we have a folder with these images. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name because I find that not only organizing by date, but also giving a name just helps me find exactly what I need later on. So we're gonna right click on these images, on this folder rather, and I'm gonna go down to rename. And then here at the end, I'm just gonna add vacation. Okay, so it's gonna keep the folder name and then it's just gonna say vacation at the end. Fantastic. Now check this out. If I right click on this folder and I go to show in finder. Okay. So here you can see in my finder on my computer, I can see this folder structure is exactly the same as it is here in Lightroom. And not only that, it's very easy for me to find my images. For instance, my 2020 folder. Now I'll have all of my photo shoots from 2020. I can go to my 2019 folder and all of my photo shoots from 2019 are listed here by date. And on most of them, I've added names, but some of them I was a little bit lazy and didn't add some names. So you can see if it just has a bunch of dates, it's a little bit hard to know what you actually shot. So that's why I prefer to go ahead and add a name. So all of the folder structure that we do here in Lightroom actually syncs to the folder structure on your computer. So it's not a completely different system. Folder structures in Lightroom are the same as on your computer. So now let's get back into Lightroom Classic. I'm gonna show you my preferred method for organizing your folders. So as of now, you can see I have one folder and all of my images are just in that folder. And that might be fine if you just have a collection of JPEGs, but what happens if you have your raw images and then maybe you edit some images so you have some PSDs and then maybe you have some images that you've output for the web or Instagram, it's a good idea to keep those separate and organized. So here's where subfolders come in really handy. So let's go ahead and create those in Lightroom and it's gonna to correspond to our computer. So here in our 2020 vacation, we're gonna right click and go to create folder inside this main folder. And I'm gonna call this capture, okay? Now I use this as like my main images that I've actually photographed. Let's go ahead and create another one, okay? And you can just call this PSD, fantastic. And we're gonna create another one and I'm gonna call this output, okay? Now you can choose to call these folders whatever you'd like. The main goal here is to keep those folder names consistent throughout the years and to make sure that you are organizing your images. So let's go ahead and click on all of our images. We're gonna hit Controller Command A. I'm gonna put these, just click and drag them right into our capture folder, okay? Now let's say I wanna edit one of these in Photoshop. I'm just gonna right click on this. We're gonna to go to Edit In and I'm gonna say Adobe Photoshop 2020, okay? There we go. We're just gonna speed this up because it's this isn't about the editing, this is mostly about our organization. Let's go ahead and grab a curves adjustment layer. We're just gonna make our darks a little bit brighter while still protecting our highlights and go ahead and save and close this out. And we're gonna go back into Lightroom. And here we go, we have a PSD. So this PSD, that's gonna go into our PSD folder. So all of our PSDs from this entire uh, journey are gonna go in there. And then let's say we have our PSD and I wanna export this out. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command E for my export. Our settings look pretty good. We're gonna get into more in depth in all this stuff later. For now, it's all about organization. So let's go ahead and hit export. And now it's like, where do we put this? Well, here in our 2020 folder, we have 2020 vacation and check this out. This is gonna go into my output folder. Let's go ahead and open that up. And then we have a JPEG that we're gonna put here in our output. Now, sometimes it's not gonna sync automatically with Lightroom again. So what you can do is just click on your main folder here, right click and go to synchronize folder. It's gonna look for new images in there and you can see it found one, okay? We're gonna click on synchronize and here we have our output folder that's gonna be perfect for the web. 
So I realized we did this very quickly, but basically we found all of our images from the photo shoot, put them in our capture folder. I chose an image, I edited it in Photoshop, and then I exported it out and put that into my output folder. And that's the image that's gonna be ready for the web. So personally, I've been organizing my photos like this for years and I find it's very easy to find exactly what I need to find. For instance, if I go back into my finder window, okay, and I wanna find, I'm thinking back to my vacation. When was my vacation? I think it was in 2020. So I'll go to my 2020 folder, then I'll go to my 2020 vacation and I'm like, okay, fantastic, it's here. Then in my capture folder, these are all the images that I captured on vacation. If I made any PSDs, they're right here and the stuff that I exported out for the web is right here. So it makes it very easy to find this at any point in time. Just again, as long as you keep your folder structure and names consistent, years from now, you should be able to get back in and find exactly what you need super quickly. And that is one of the main reasons that I like to use Lightroom Classic is to help out with my organization. Now, the other reason that I like to create folders with things like my images that I captured, images that I output for the web, my PSDs, is that this stays consistent whether I'm using Lightroom or not. Like this is just my finder window here. I, I can quit Lightroom if I wanted and still find the PSD for this photo shoot incredibly quickly. Now there's one last way that I like to organize my images and this is with collections in Lightroom. So let's go back here into Lightroom. We're just gonna go ahead and click on all of my capture images. So I see all of my images that I've actually photographed. Okay, now here in our collections, we're gonna go ahead and add a collection. I'm just gonna call this sport and activity. There we go. Now, in this case, we have like 41 images in this series, but let's say you had a couple thousand, it could be really nice to have those laid out. So sports and activities, that looks like a sports and activity. Someone's diving, we're paddling, we're sailing, we're surfing, we're doing all kinds of fun stuff. There we go, some stand-up paddle boarding, a couple more surfing and some diving. That looks great. So let's go ahead and put those in sports and activity. Let's go ahead and create another one. This can just be called drone. There we go. So we have a couple drone shots here. Brought your new fancy drone on vacation with you and captured some cool aerial photographs. All right, those can go in your drone folder. And then let's just do one more. We're gonna call this food and bev. Fantastic. So I'm gonna just hold control or command and click on some of these images, food and beverage from our trip. Cause obviously that is a big part of, well, my personal vacations anyway. Let's eat and drink fun things. So now if you wanna find just your food and beverage photos from this trip, they're incredibly easy to find. The sports and activity photos, you can find those as well, or the drone photos as well. You can add or remove things from your collections very easily. Now there are a lot of ways to use collections in Lightroom. In this case, I know we were using for like drone shots and sports and activity, but let's say you're photographing a wedding. You could have a collection for the engagement session. You could have a collection for the ceremony itself. You could have one for the reception. You could have one for dancing. You could have one for the vows, maybe some B-roll. You could have a collection for your video shots and another one for your stills. There are a lot of ways that you can create collections and help stay better organized. And generally I like to do them by different themes of whatever I've photographed or taken videos of from the trip. Now, in my opinion, there is one downside to using the collections feature in Lightroom. It's fantastic as long as you're using Lightroom in that specific catalog. But if you change your Lightroom catalog or you just don't use Lightroom anymore, those collections kind of like don't apply anymore. So if you're like, you know what? I want everything organized by folder. You can totally do that too. So let's go back here and right now I've created a drone collection, but here in my capture, I can right click and I can say create a folder inside capture and I can call this drone. There we go, let's go to our drone collection and I'm just gonna take my images. Let's go ahead and click here and I'm gonna put them in my drone subfolder, okay? We can do this again. Let's just do create a folder inside and just call this food and bev. There we go. Let's go to all of our food and bev images and put them right here as well. All right, we'll do this one more time. We're gonna right click and go to capture and there we go. And then we're gonna put all of our sport and activity in this folder. So if you've organized by folder, then you can right click here. You can go to show in finder. And then here within your capture, you have your drone shots, you have food and beverage, and you have your sport and activity. 
and then these ones basically are uncategorized. So it's still extremely easy to find exactly what you need to find. This time everything is organized by folder. So if I quit Lightroom or I'm working on a computer that doesn't have Lightroom on it, I can still stay organized. So whether you decide to completely organize by folder or use collections is totally up to you. Just remember if you're not using Lightroom or if you change your Lightroom catalog, then your collections are not gonna be available to you. So that's how we import and organize our photos in Lightroom. Now let's put it to the test. Let's see how fast I can find that PSD that we created earlier. So here we are. I'm gonna create a new finder window. All right, I just need to go to my hard drive where everything is stored. Here we are, Flurn Pictures 2020, our vacation, PSD, and boom, right click, open that in Photoshop, and we're good to go. That took very little time, browsing from many different photos right down to one. All right, we did it. Thank you so much for tuning in to our free series on Lightroom Classic. We have a special gift for you. We actually have a 10 pack of free Lightroom presets that's available for yours to download. You can click on your screen and on the link right down below to get to those. We release Lightroom presets on flurn.com all the time. We've got a fantastic giant library and you can get a 10 pack absolutely free. Just follow the link on your screen right now. If you enjoyed this video, want to get more free tutorials from Flurn, click on that subscribe button up there. YouTube thinks you're going to love this video. And if you want to really enhance your skills and learn all about Lightroom and Photoshop and take your photos to the next level, I recommend Flurn Pro. Thanks again. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone.